Welcome, everybody, to RimWorld. Today, I have a pretty special treat. Uh, it's not exclusive or anything like that, but I wanted to show this off as much as possible because it is very, very cool. The Empire mod update has been released. As it says, Phase 3 there, which adds a really, really cool, fully customizable military to your your settlements as a military option here which which i'll go over through the course of this video but if you're looking for a much better explanation a lot more of a technical explanation someone who obviously knows what they're talking about the empire dev has actually put up a video of this on their own channel so i'll make sure that's pinned as top comment i've been on yesterday's but i got to it late so i'll try and pin it on this one ready for when it goes up if you're interested in what exactly is going on in the mod that can help you but there's a there's a link to the video there as well if you're curious goes over a lot of the uh, basically all of the empire mod but then it goes into quite heavy depth on this particular aspect of things which we're going to be looking at today because i have a feeling this is going to be really really useful to uh, to us going forward especially on the difficulty we're on right now i am expecting to be clapped by the empire eventually when it when we start annihilating some of these much smaller settlements like the elves the orcs the goblins that's only going to leave people like the blue moon corporation like the empire and at that stage we as we stand right now absolutely cannot match them we've got a bunch of mishmash armor together we've got a bunch of mishmash weapons until we can find a good way to unify across the board weapons and armor those guys are going to just swamp us so this will allow us to more actively take a stand against those guys without being completely annihilated. But the cool thing about this is, as well, I figured we could play a one-man series. Basically, long story short, it allows you to fully customize and create multiple units with different particular layouts. So, say, for example, the example used in the video by the dev is, is a grenadier. So, somebody who has, say, a shield belt, grenades, whatever else. You can make a pure melee squad. You can mix and match it. So, you've got melee at the front. And with, with, the, with the squad unit, you could have melee at the front. You could have uh, warriors at the back. So, for, for example, we could have a lineup of Sharamuses. And then at the back, we could have uh, a lineup of, of long-range weaponry or something like that. But it's a really, really cool system. Obviously, we'll dive into this as we go forward here. I want to make sure, first of first things first, that we have a second military base. Th this is, again, discussed in the, the video the dev put up, but the settlements, when you use them for any sort of military actions, if we call them into our base, for example, with drop pods, we can... Um, we can use them offensively naturally, but that will put them on cooldown so they won't be able to be called in for another while. So that way I want to set up, or, or, to, or to that effect, I want to set up a secondary settlement specifically just for military action. So I'm thinking we just drop them there, huh? Uh, Caravan has sent 0 0.2 days. Get that done as soon as possible. Get them set up as soon as possible. Get them upgrading as soon as possible. I was just checking the, uh, the, the, the comments on yesterday again, just see if there was anything I've forgotten. There seems to be a little bit of a debate about whether or not the long-range mineral scanner is better than the ground penetrating scanner. Um... To be honest, I can see the argument for why the Grand Penetrating Scanner is less inconvenient, particularly when we're in a fragile situation, like I said. But to be honest, I've never really used the Long Range Mineral Scanner before, which is why I wanted to, to use that one. Although, given the, the, the arguments brought up in the comment section yesterday, I'll disable that for the time being. And we'll put Delta back on research, particularly when we've got a lot of important research to do. Um, and we'll leave we'll leave Halitos to grab some more things. The other thing is I asked yesterday why we couldn't see any steel. Um, people were saying it's because the drill was unpowered, but quite clearly the drill is powered. So, your guess is as good as mine there, Chief. <laughs> Everyone was saying it was because the drill had no power, but it definitely has power because he's quite literally using it right now. Um, I don't know why we can't see it all of a sudden. Can we see? We can't even see the other one. Oh, is it because the actual scanner has no power? I bet that's it. Right, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, um, let's go ahead and flick the switch on that one and see if that is the case. That would make a lot of sense in hindsight. The, the scanner would be the thing to tell us where the ore is, huh? Right, there we go. Let's see if that, uh, there we go. Now we can see it all. Very nice. Okay. So we also found a little bit of steel over there. I suppose in hindsight, that would be a lot less effort to drill through there. The only reason I don't want to drill through the edge of the mountain is just in case we accidentally open up a new area. There's quite a strong chance that we might find another large pocket of open land. And that makes our mountain base much less defendable if we have obviously more avenues for the AI to get to us. Um, I want to be able to see where we need to mine to though, chief. So I'm going to put that there because I think when the second we close this menu, oh no, it's still good. Yeah, we're good. All right, never mind. Uh, let's go ahead and mine that out then. There we are. Okay, so we know roughly where that steel is going to be. And then I guess we will use the uh, short-range scanner for the timing. We've still got plenty of steel to get from here, granted. And I'll also assume that mining yield is not affected by... Um, by limbs or tools or anything like that. I'll assume that the deep drill is always a consistent... Um, I'll assume that's always a consistent thing. You know what? I'm actually going to go look that up. Because if, if, if it is the case that it's affected by mining yield, we should have Helitos with two of the mining arms instead of the... Or whoever is our best miner. I've got Helitos on it right now. But um, we do have a miner out there with... Was it pork? Maybe Quarantine had it? 
Somebody we gave mining arms, did we not? I honestly don't remember in hindsight. Um, well, look, if it turns out we can, uh, if it turns out it does affect mining yield, I'm more than happy to turn out a couple of extra bionics. Uh, people asking why I was keeping the bionics in the freezer, because these things, uh, as it says there, will spoil if they're not kept in the freezer. Um, regular bionics, though, obviously we can put in the hospital, but I'm just keeping it all for the same storage area, given that we're using, not really using this freezer for much else, are we? The non-rotting tentacles, like the mecha tentacles and whatever else, are being stored on the shelves, but we will create a little area for those. We'll give a little area for those in the hospital then to um, to help cut out the middleman. Let's do something like this. Clear all. And then set to critical with any... I assume it just all comes under bionics, right? Items. Body parts? Oh, no. Wait, we don't want... Yeah, bionic body parts. That's exactly what we're after. Um, let's go back to that one a second. Because there's a load of new... Um, so bionic, architect, cyborg, mind is all good. We don't want any natural, just in case any rot, very similar to what we've got here. Um, prosthetics are also fine, but I can't imagine we're ever going to have any prosthetics. Those are set to critical, and as I recall, all the shelves are set to important, so they should just immediately start hauling those over. I hate the fact that he keeps... Oh, he's making new components. Well, I suppose it's not super necessary, is it? I should really put that one to the bottom. That way he'll use up all the components before before starting on some fresh ones. Right, let's do that instead. There we go. And we're just about to finish Mechanite Assembly. Now, though this in itself is not obviously something we're particularly interested in, it does lead to brain implants, which will be quite cool. Oh, pain. Oh, it's Pain Stopper and Joywire. I guess Pain Stopper would be really, really good for Sharamus, wouldn't it? Um, are there any other... That's the Glissworld Hospital bed I was talking about yesterday, by the way, which isn't affected by, like, the Advanced Vitals Monitor. So it's actually less effective than a regular bed. Um... I'm looking for any sort of endgame bionics, then. Uh, what do you think? Should I have, like, cybernetic? See if that brings anything up. When it fucking works. Thank you. Uh, cybernetic organism. Ah, oh, here we are. Neural net work. Settlement in danger. Ah, oh, shit. Um, attacking forces through. We've got that covered. No problem. Um, military town. To be honest, Safety's Creek, for the name of our next military settlement, is absolutely fantastic, and I couldn't have thought of anything better. Um, so what do we want, then? We want the training yard. We want the Merc Company. We want the... Uh, well, don't tell me I remember. The Adventurers Guild and the Barracks, I believe, were the best ones. Oh, no, Automated Defense Systems, right? Those give a flat military level, whereas the Barracks just give plus one military level. This one gives a ridiculous amount. Yeah, plus two. Um, that's a lot better. Although it's obviously way, way, way more expensive. We can just about afford it. Or not. Shit. Did I genuinely spend slightly too much? It doesn't matter. Our tax profits are so high. We can afford to spend 250 now and then rip it up later on. Um, what can we get you guys doing then? I guess we'll turn this into an animal's production for the time being. There we are, especially given our doctrine that we've got enabled right now. Uh, can we also upgrade military town? That was 4,000. So we'll have to wait for the next tax cycle, which is going to be in 3.1 days. But look at that. Estimated profit. 11,593 silver. Jesus. Who is actually at... So it's Alliance of Combo. Safety... Oh, it is Safety Creek coming under attack. Well, that's, uh, that's convenient. Um, let's send them military town. Let's send those guys in. Do I have the um, automated defense in military town? I don't think I actually built it in the end, did I? For exactly the same reason. I think I said that we didn't have enough silver at the time. Um, it's colonies, military town. Just take a look very quickly. Uh, you ask Merc Company? No, we don't. So I guess it would be better to swap out the... What are the adventurers go? Plus five base tax, plus one military level. Merc Company gives plus one military level, minus 10% tax. So it would be better to swap out... That gives military level and additional tax, but we lose production to food, weapons, and apparel. That's not relevant anyway. I guess it would be best to swap out the in-house Merc Company for the... For the other one, given that this gives a minus 10% to tax level. Swapping that out for the automatic defenses would be a lot better. Okay, fair enough then. Oh! Is that where I went wrong a few episodes ago? Just to go to me, I think I was looking at town level rather than military level. Either way, we worked out in the end, so it doesn't matter too much. There's a lot of suggestions as well what to do in regards to these. Like download the locks mod and let it so raiders can open doors. Have it so there's just an open door on the route because that one let the heat out. To be honest, there was a, a much better argument in my opinion for... Maybe not sending raiders through the spiders, given that they take, as, as we found out, it takes like a year, just over a year, for the spiders to grow. And they've only just started producing hyperweave. So maybe we'll let them get a profit in for a little while and then do something else. To be honest, it would be much better to obviously send them into a room full of turrets, rather than... A whole load of flame turrets around here is a real last, last dash attempt to stop any raiders. That would be a lot better than potentially put these spiders on the line. Apparently, the spiders are much better at ranged as well because they can fire the webs that stun people. So if we wanted to use the spiders more effectively, I'd build a big embrasure um, style sort of circuit for them. So we'll we'll do something with the spiders eventually. It's just I want to get some hyperweave out of them before we consign them to death, basically. Ah, there we go. There's our mechanite assembly. Right, okay. Let's go ahead and drop one of these uh, mechanite assemblies. Just go ahead and put one of those down. That is two advanced components. 
It's very expensive, but I think it's going to be very worthwhile. Um, we could drop it in front of that, to be fair, because those that don't actually do anything besides speed up the work speed there. Right, cool. Mechanite assembly. Let's get pork on that immediately. I want to see what else this offers us by default. Maybe it gives some recipes just, just by it being there. Oh, man, those new shelves came in so helpful, didn't they? Look at that. We've already got it working on. Cool. What's he working on now? Barnick's stomach. We're currently looking at the two flashlights being finished. It's going to be a long time before all the barnicks are done for, for Sharamus. So we've got Neuro Network crewed up. I want all of this stuff. What do we need for all of this? Oh, we need tech prints. Fuck. And then cybernetic organism requires tech prints as well. Ah. Oh. Create cyborgs and super soldiers. Cyorks and super soldiers in our situation. Right, what can we do with this then? Um, fibrous mechanite injector. Oh. Oh, so we can just give them the diseases. Obviously, the diseases come up on us as well, but we would need luciferium. Um... Oh, that's quite cool. Taking multiple doses will only increase the severity of the side effects and pain, but it won't obviously increase the bonuses. That's a cool idea. Normally, they're kind of a negative thing, especially during the early game. So they might move fast, they might be more accurate, but obviously they, they come with so much pain that you can't really do much about because you're not exactly in the most comfortable situation. But for us right now, where they have tables that increase their recreation just by walking on them, where we have a literal diamond fucking hot tub, I think we honestly could, we could min-max to that extent where we're infecting our people with sets three mechanites to get the movement speed bonuses... And then maybe give them just a couple of hours of recreation in our in our glorious luxury base. Right, so we want to drop down a stall door, don't we? Do we have enough one for a gold? What about like a, what about some variation here? What about a nice jade stall door? There's only five jade as well. That's a great deal. Oh, there we are. Luxurious, very beautiful. Everything's made of like diamond, gold, or jade, and only counts as very beautiful. That's insane. Um, the wealth. There's thirty thousand colony wealth in this one room. When the next Mechanoid raid turns up and we get absolutely wiped out, that's why. Oh, Jesus. Speaking of which. Ah, my favorite combo. Some cows followed immediately by raiders. Great. Uh, goblins from the people of Canva. This is the brother of Edward Crosby. Troit. Now, bear in mind these are goblins. And bear in mind we are still on Merciless. This is going to be a lot of fucking goblins. Yep. Okay. Uh, goblins, of course, have low military tech. 60 there. And we've got another 48 there. 108 goblins in total. Now, they aren't going to sap anymore because all our walls are three blocks thick. So they are only going to go through the kill box. Everyone, draft and then equip from Armorak. Get to it, team. Uh, who can't equip? Helitos, Helitos. Do we not have any armor for you at all? No spare flat jackets. We do have flat jackets. I suppose I probably need to actually get him to transfer them to the Armorak, though, don't I? Um, we've got an excellent quality Xenotech one there. Uh, I guess that's probably the best one. We've got Luxurious. I, I need to check what they do, actually, before I just dish them out. So this one gives lower armor. Great. That's really helpful. Uh, this one gives... Oh, God. It's still not very good, is it? Move speed, mental break, threshold. Plus 150 max hit points. So his armor lasts longer, but that doesn't really affect too much their combat effectiveness. I'm just giving him a basic one. Rather than, you know, affect certain things like immunity and work speed and yada, yada, yada. We'll just go for a basic flak vest. Go get that on Helitos. It's perfect. This is exactly what... I, I love this mechanized armor rack for exactly this reason. Like, normally, I always feel so bad about using power armor in RimWorld because you, you are massively cutting down on your in-game productivity in exchange for the defense that you desperately need. Otherwise, you get one shot, right? But this is why I love these armor racks. They're a lot of setting up and a lot of fiddling around. But when you get them right, they're so, so good for the end game. And we don't really... All of it. We don't really need it against a bunch of goblins, but we might as well give it a go. Edward Crosby, I'm going to put you on the front line to kill your brother. Now, I'm actually only going to use up four of these slots here so that our people can very quickly retreat if it becomes necessary. So I'm going to put the people with the lower range guns at the front. Um, so that, so Ups' is plasma rifle, I kind of had this the wrong way around. They've got a very long range, sure, but they're massively inaccurate. It would be better to get him somewhere closer where the accuracy is obviously slightly less uh, slightly less relevant. And then you've got a chain shotgun, so let's get you over there as well. Hello, us what we're looking at. Chain. Right, okay. Uh, we have to set up new defensive zones too. So charge LMGs, quite long range. I'm going to bring those up here. Then we're also going to put you up there, and you've got a sniper, so let's put you up there. Sharamus the second, for the time being, temporarily, will be assigned to front door duty. He's going to be the one that eventually will stem the flow, should they get too far. We want to put him somewhere where he's still able to retreat, but where he's far enough back to allow our people to get away without being shot at. So I'm going to put him up there. Uh, then as for fear, so gets knocked out a lot, and pain, those guys can have this area. Have I not assigned anyone? Oh, we're still waiting on Helitos. Right, got it. I was going to say that looks a little bit, um, looks a little bit, uh, low scope. Wait, how did you get there? God, you move fast. Um, is that genuinely everybody assigned? I feel like I've, oh, Pork, 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 Pork. What are you doing, my man? Get down here. Right, Pork needs to go there. Helitos is going to the top row, and that basically is everybody dealt with. Nice work. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and forbid that door as well. That will come in handy when we want to, obviously, loot raiders, carry home raiders, whatever else, but for... 
But for now, I don't want them accidentally going through the door mid-raid. Right, let's see what we've got then. Between these laser weapons and Upsa's occasionally accurate shooting with this plasma gun, we should be in a pretty good pretty good position. What's annoying is, I don't know if you can tell, he's always aiming at the, the, the guy at the front. And then by the time he actually is preparing to shoot, they've moved around the corner. He did knock someone down there, though. Great shot, great shot. Okay. This looks like it's going to be a difficult raid just based on the pure... That's a lot of goblins. <laughs> we are fighting quite literally a factor of 10 more than what we've got to defend ourselves. So this is not an ideal situation. Get on the cannon. It's time. Alatos, on the cannon, brother. I have to see what this thing does. Boom. Okay. Uh, set force target. Shoot it like... What do you think? Shoot it there. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Go, go, go. I want to see this fucking cannonball, brother. Oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. So it's like a more controlled mortar. But I imagine if you're hit by a cannonball, you're fucking dead regardless. Um, we need to reinstall that turret there as well. My bad. Right, let's move you down. Sharamus, get ready, my friend. You've got some goblins on your hands. How are we doing? Not well. Not as well as I thought we would be. Let's phrase it that way. Um, we need to shut down the robots too. Shit. Uh, deactivate all. There we are. Okay. Sharamus versus naked giant orc versus naked goblin. I think we should be all right here. Uh, it's, I don't know why they can all stand on one spot, though. That obviously makes our melee characters significantly weaker. Um, oh God, we're getting peppered here. Fucking hell. They are fleeing. One group of them is fleeing. Now we got to fight the second group. God, our people are getting peppered. It's, it's just unfortunately... Wow, quarantine died. Holy shit, quarantine died? Where was quarantine? Wow, that's insane. Um, oh, quarantine got shot in the brain. Not much you can do about that, unfortunately. Brain shot in the brain by a great bow. We had a recon helmet. You know, it's it's the third best helmet in the game. That's just genuinely a case of, of large amounts of troops and unluckiness. I'm going to pull these guys back. I'm going to pull these guys back to the second kill box. It's, it's, you know, if we get all the enemies in the same area together, that way we've got... Oh, what's it's down? Oh, piss. That's not ideal. How's he doing? Three hours. These goblins have seriously done us in. Oh my god, they got past? They smashed the fucking door down. Oh, no. Because they're trying to flee. Oh, that's so dumb. Okay. Um, so the ones that are trying to flee have just managed to fucking smash the door. Now, get down there, Sharamus. Come on. I'm not going to lie. We're in a really bad position here. This is genuinely a very, very bad raid for us. I'm smash all my damn doors down for absolutely no discernible reason at all. Body block them, Sharamus. Bull one is dead. I don't give a fuck about fucking bull one. Okay, we've noticed another, I've noticed another issue with the sandbox. Uh, with the sandbox? With the killbox here. And that's what we need sandbags on this corner. Oh, we also didn't build those bloody barriers in the end, did I? Not that it's going to make too much difference to the cover, I will admit. It basically, it doesn't actually provide any extra defense, as far as I know. Bear in mind that they're stood directly behind an embrasure in a trench. However, the bonus to that is it prevents enemies using our own embrasures against us. Like, for example, what Prongy is doing there. Classic fucking Prongy. Um, well, let's go ahead and do that instead. We'll do that there, and then we'll run it all the way around. That way, it'll stop them standing still. Um, and that corner should still be covered by that. Come on, there can't be many more that we've got to kill here. I'm genuinely surprised they haven't started fleeing it. This is absolutely insane. But look, as far as I'm concerned, if we fight 100 people and we only lose quarantine, that's a good raid. That's genuinely an okay raid. Oh, no. Oh. Damn. The cannonballs blow up as well. But we're good. Okay. What's it? You need immediate medical support. Now, unfortunately, this means when we put down any sort of bloody medical spot, we are going to have to do this. We're going to have to do this. And then we're going to have to forbid the beds. Otherwise, they will try and take them to the best possible area. So it's a bit of a ball like I will admit. That's all right. Okay. There we go. Um... Right, someone rescue him immediately. I don't care who. Rescue what's it. What's it cannot die. Uh, everyone else, go to business. Good lord. The, the, I am seeing a downside to the trenches, and that, of course, is being the maneuverability is, is crap. Um, rescue Smooth Octopus. Where are you taking Smooth Octopus? Just to any old bed? Um, I assume that's been reserved by... What's it? I'm hoping it's been reserved. And Rose, I'm going to bring you down here, and I'm actually going to say what's it gets doctor care. Keep them alive. Then we'll worry about the important things later on. Let's get you buried. Alternatively, we, we are getting to the stage where resurrection is a possibility. Whether or not the re we've got the resources to see that through remains an entirely new thing. Uh, pork, go ahead and... Where? Was Pork not armoured? Oh, shit. Pork didn't get his gear. That's a shame. Um, okay, how are we looking then? 
Smooth Octopus is about to be hopefully dropped there. Yes, he is. Okay, good work, good work. Rose is waiting. Okay, here we go, here we go. Thank you, sir. Gets knocked out a lot. You are a great, you're a great savior of this colony. Go about your business. And then prioritize tending to what's it. Oh, that was um that was a bit messy. That was a bit messy. But then again, it was a hundred people and we lost one person. And that was just due to bad RNG, unfortunately. Um Okay, I've learned some issues with our kill box design. Then number one, uh, we need to set Sharamus or whoever's on guard below this door. Otherwise, otherwise we need to get rid of it. And the only reason I gave it then was the shortcut into the kill box, to be fair. Um, other otherwise, we remove it entirely. We'll keep it. No, we won't. Otherwise, it defeats the whole point of having this area. Okay, take it away. Bake him away, toys. You go back about your business as well. I want to make sure they are all... I, I hope they don't drop their gear. Oh, I know why they won't drop their gear. It sets it to force whenever they equip it off in an armor rack, which is which is obviously great. That's fucking fantastic. Wait, Pork doesn't have an armor rack. Oh, that's why I didn't equip anything. Right, got it, got it, got it. Okay, we'll put down a spell in there. How's he looking? Dying in four hours. He lost He lost nothing permanent. Shot in the neck by a flintlock. That's the thing that was killing my man there. But besides that, everything else is absolutely fine. One more treatment. You know what? He's good enough now to be taken to the hospital. Let's go ahead and turn those into medical beds. Um, where's Smooth Octopus? Let's go ahead and do that. Delta, I assume you're in more trouble than Edward Crosby. You rescue Smooth Octopus instead, then. Is she going to a hospital bed? She is. Good work, good work, good work. Okay. Um, Rose is hauling a goblin. As much as I'd love to start capturing goblins, I'm only going to do it with the people who are healthy. So, Pork, let's start capturing some of the ones that look like they're actually going to survive the journey. Capture him. Pain capture uh you're not in terrible health capture you so uh, so actually we had a lot of people who were just completely uninjured i'm, I'm starting to reconsider this first line of killbots it might be better just to fill that with turrets you know because whenever somebody stands there they die because not only do the retreating people get them but they take a lot of firepower as the enemy gets stuck around this corner the pathfinder very much screwed over a lot of our people stood there of course the one person that will be down and actually in a life-threatening condition is our spare doctor that's so classic you're okay uh, was Delta seriously the only other person who really took a lot of damage there? He needs tending, but he's not hes not bleeding out. Edward Crosby is bleeding out. Edward Crosby, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, who are you rescuing? Smooth Octopus. Oh, right, because you were in a better position than Delta. I remember now, but my God, you're moving slow. Good Lord. Medical emergency. Yeah, no shit. Rose is on it, though. Rose has got it down. Um, let's go ahead and give him best quality medicine now. Rose, if you don't mind. There we are. Okay, we've got no good set medicine left, but we've got plenty of regular medicine. Honestly, in a hospital like this, it really makes very little difference anyway. How you doing? Seven hours. Well, let's get what's it finished off. Uh, then he can be discharged basically as soon as possible. Nice work. And then you are... No, no stripping. You're next. <laughs> got any other good backup doctors? I mean, Helitos wouldn't hurt. Um, upset isn't bad either. Obviously, Upset has... A... The reason is I want to be able to... Uh... Patch up our goblin fellas. Who's not injured? Halitos could probably self-tend pretty decently. A shot in the torso, a slight bruise. You'll be fine. You tend you, and then you tend the prisoners, who should be set to herbal medicine, I assume. Yeah, right, so we actually aren't going to tend to those at all, because we don't have any herbal medicine left, as far as I know. Oh, we got bloody boatloads of it. My bad. Okay. Um, is there anyone else? So these guys should be going back to capture more, so you grab him. And all these people, don't forget, we can ship off to our settlements, more importantly, so... It's exactly why I'm doing this. I'm not particularly interested in recruiting a goblin army. Goblins are very squishy as well. Um, it's part of one of their racial sort of uh, racial traits. They are a lot squishier than your regular people. The elves are quite cool. If you didn't see the last series, the elves get uh, different bonuses. Like wood elves, for example, can sleep outside. Don't mind raw cannibalism. Um, dark elves don't mind darkness, obviously. Uh, things like that. They've got some really cool racial features. So as far as I recall, the goblins are pretty fucking squishy as a result of that. Um, does it say anywhere whether or not they've got... I'm not sure. As far as I recall, they have a, they have some sort of weakness anyway. Can I send them to a settlement before they die on me? Uh, military town has eight prisoners. I suppose we should probably send them to Safety's Creek, shouldn't we? We don't want to overload them with too many, too many prisoners, realistically. Uh, I imagine that will contribute massively to unrest and things like that. I have no idea what sending prisoners would do. I need to go look that up. I think, uh, judging by the fact that she's tending to ground runner too, I assume all of our people are nicely tended then. Did anybody lose anything permanent? That's the next important thing. Um, right ear torn off. Okay, that's replaceable. Uh, you've really lost nothing there. Um, you need tending. Yep, Rose decided that the ground runner was more important. I'm going to have to disagree on that one. There you go. Uh, Halitos is on Edward Crosby, whose long has been destroyed. That's actually the most significant damage we've had for a very, very long time. Sharamus, despite the fact he was on the front lines, actually not too bad at all. Oh my god, I turned... 
Sharamus, the 56-year-old orc with the bad back, into our uh, into our bouncer. That was probably a bad idea in hindsight. Right, well, I've grabbed a load of goblins. They're still grabbing some more now. I'm going to go ahead and reactivate the robots so they can help us with all of this crap we've got to dish out. They'll go and deliver resources to the buildings that need rebuilding, etc. Um, okay, good stuff. How many goblins have we captured again? So I've sent eight to... Uh, that's going to be our eighth one we've sent to Safety's Creek. Hey, if we're getting eight goblins from each raid or eight prisoners from each raid, that's going to be fantastic. And I assume all that does is... Uh, it creates unrest, perhaps? I guess it just gives them more workers. That's actually really cool. Um, okay, so Total Profit kind of caps out there at 4-8. Okay, so any more using any more workers there would be kind of a waste of time unless we turn it into like a... Unless we build buildings, obviously, specifically for that one. I should be sending them instead to places where we do have profit no matter what. So places obviously like Lobo would be fantastic. We the bad guys. I think that's just occurred to me. We're the... We're the bad guys here. Well, the goblins did attack us. They cast the first stone. And you know what they say? He who cast the first stone deserves life slavery in the mines. Well, shit, no, no, no. You actually need to capture that when you're moron. <laughs> no infections yet either, which is quite a nice surprise. Now, obviously, it's, it set us back a little bit in terms of research. I was really hoping we can get Sharamus... Sharamus resurrected back upon his feet today. Instead, we've now got Quarantine as well, who also needs resurrecting. Uh, Pork, what are you doing right now, my friend? Resting. Sorry to interrupt you, but can you finish off the silver sarcophagus in... And I might even have to turn on one of these frozen columns as well, because it's getting somewhat warm in there. Um, but we'll... Oh, one of our goblins died. Shit. We'll turn this back on. We'll get this person buried as soon as possible, so that if we decide on it, we can resurrect Quarantine as well. What are you good at? Careful shooter, depressive, industrious. I mean, depressive is obviously not the best trait, but they had good mining, which I can't really complain about too much. Trauma Savant as well. If, they, if we resurrect them now, Trauma Savant gives them all those bonus little, um... Oh, you can't see it while they're dead. That's a shame. I wanted to see what that actually did to their skills. They, like, learn faster or they, they, they have high manipulation or something like that? Don't remember off the top of my head. I sent three of the goblins over to our quarry, and then they're going to turn... Oh, pure profit. But you can see it's only gone up a very, very small amount now. Cost per worker is becoming, like, almost prohibitively, not quite, but almost prohibitively expensive. So, really, we only want to send maybe five or six prisoners to each one um, for, for, for that profit level. Can we build better... Can we build, like, stronger embrasures? I guess we could build them out of steel, but again, I'd, I'd rather save the steel if possible. Oh, it's our first infection. Yikes. Edward Crosby. Uh, Rose, can you use some actual medicine on him, though, rather than nothing? I think she was just cleaning him or something like that. Tantrum, smooth octopus, that's fine. Gonna destroy steel hospital bed masterwork. If you do that, you will get beaten. My sister who died? My sister Huang? Who was that? Did we shoot a Huang in our last raid? Right, don't you dare smash that hospital bed. If you smash a steel, a masterwork hospital bed, you deserve that to be kicked to death. Stop it. Please. Okay, don't actually kill. What the fuck are you talking about? How? Bruising the torso caused her to die. A uh, bruising the torso caused her to die. I mean, I know she was already heavily injured. But one torso bruise would not be enough to kill her if she could still walk. Maybe it's... Fair in mind a bruise in the torso also caused Sharamus to die, and he too was wearing recon armor. Genuinely, I'm leaning now towards the fact that it might be a bug more than anything else. Sharamus was at full health. Now, granted, Smooth Octopus was very fragile, um, but certainly wasn't wasn't anywhere near being punched to death. God damn. Well, it's a good job we're getting Resurrect Mech Serums. I'm going to Resurrect Smooth Octopus because that one's bullshit. Um, guess we'll work on that one. That becomes an option. And we've buried Quarantine. There we go. Uh, pork. <laughs> pork, I have another coffin for you to build, my friend. Unfortunately, there's someone just going to have to build out of whatever we've got lying around. We've got plenty of sky steel. Not really. Um, wood. You get a wooden coffin. That's what you get. Look, it was her or we lose a masterwork bed. We can resurrect her, but you can never guarantee another masterwork hospital bed. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, defensive safety has been successful. Not only that, the rest of the military buildings have been built on it as well. Fantastic news. Okay. When's the next billing cycle? Because I could really do with some silver. Um... Still another 2.1 days. Man, that raid really took a long time, didn't it? Good God. And that's really put people in a bad mood. I mean, beating to death one of your own colony members in the hospital is, is definitely not a good way of... Um, see that bin then? Remove some of that. Remove some of that dirt. That's fantastic. 
It really isn't a good way to um, help keep morale of your colony up, huh? Right, let's get them to take off their armor sets as well. I think that's probably going to be the last raid we have for hopefully a couple of days anyway. But Paul Watts is naked. He's only wearing a flat jacket. I'm not sure if that's any better, to be honest with you. Right, there we go. Um, so I've kept Helatos, Pork, and Pain down the end there because they're the ones that need to also take off their armor. So you transfer to armor right. Let's put you back somewhere convenient. Helatos, to be fair, is barely wearing any armor, so I'm not really too bothered about getting those guys unequipped. Well, I'm still a little bit annoyed about that one. I think there's something seriously wrong about all these extremely powerful one-punch men we've got kicking around. Ah, oh, there we go. Pork has been successfully calmed down. Hopefully now we can have Port rebuild the killbox as soon as possible. Because uh, if we do get another raid now, we are seriously, seriously fucked. Obviously, our colony wealth hasn't changed at all, so they're still going to be as difficult as always. I want to get you working on this rebuild. Because this killbox is the only thing standing between us and uh, being basically completely wiped out. Might even go as far as to removing the trenches. They're not bad, but... The downside to them is obviously, yeah, you can't build turrets on them. Secondly, I think we might have been able to keep quarantine alive if we didn't have those... Well, especially what's it being down. Let's look at it that way. When quarantine was uh, was killed, I was trying to obviously retreat them out there. And then that's what caused what's it to get knocked down because climbing out of them just takes so goddamn long. I think in the event of a snappy raid, better mind, we're already going to try and go over here, get our armor equipped, and then go about our regular stuff. It's probably more worthwhile to to remove them, given that we've already got so much on our plate to do pre-raid, short of them also climbing into bloody trenches. So now then, it's probably relevant to, for me to start taking a look at the military. So the cool thing about this is, is it uh, the best way I can describe this, for those of you who have, who have watched any CK2 I put up, the best way I can describe this is a retinue cap. And that's probably the best way to describe the whole thing as a personal retinue. So depending on your settlement's military level, you have a different squad cost. That, of course, being your retinue cap, if you want to go by my very extended and pained metaphor here. Military town, for example, have a squad cost of 13,000. That means we can create a squad up to the value of 13,000 points. That doesn't equate to silver, as far as I know. Um, it's just, just basically a point system. We can create a squad up to 13,000 points, which will obviously be influenced by the amount of squad members you have, by what gear they have, etc., etc. So, we're going to start. Apparently, these have no function quite yet, but that's quite a cool idea. I, I, let's see what the, the expansion plans are for that one. New unit one. We're going to call this one, what do you think? Just sort of generic gunner. Let's give them a generic name like gunner. And then we get to decide, depending on our tech points, what we've already researched, what we can equip them with. And you can see they've all got various costs. The cool thing about this as well, let's say we pick War Veil. Let's well, say we pick War Veil. You can also go for what it's made out of. So you can get, like, a group of, say, four or five really hyper-powerful super soldiers. Similar to, say, calling in Cataphracts when you are the equivalent Empire rank. Or you can go for a mass unit of goblins, for example. You can call in 108 goblins for the same price. So then, um, shirts. What do we want to, do we even want a shirt? Do we want to just give them, like, armor or something? Oh, we haven't even researched armor yet. Right. Maybe you can't even give them armor. That would obviously be quite powerful. Um, let's just give you some basic stuff here. T-shirt is more than fine. Made out of the finest cloth. Because I really don't give a shit. Um, jacket, pelt, uh, let's give them a duster. There you go. Nice, fine, uh, excuse me, duster, cloth. Maybe we actually genuinely don't have the research for armor done yet. I can't say I remember. Um... Armor. Ar armor. Um, recon armor. Say that, for example. Uh, no, we haven't researched them yet. Ah, oh, that explains why we haven't got access to it. We might. Apparently, mods are fully supported in this. We might be able to make full made combat squads. I didn't mean to create a new one there. Get out of here. Um, right, let's go back to our gunner. The UI is actually really, really good as well. It feels like as much as it needs to be without being overly complex, which I really, really like about that. Um, right, what weapon do we want to give them? Ah, anglerfish. We could slap them with an anglerfish. That's so good. Um, oh, man, look, we've got options like the core launchers, the grenade launchers, inferno cannons built in, internal charge blaster. That's fantastic. Um, orbital bombardment. That seems like a horrible idea. What the fuck is a tornado generator? I've never even seen those before, and I'm pretty sure they're base game. Um, should we just go with something basic? Should we go for, like, battle rifles, carbines, something like that? We could go for charge weapon if we want to, obviously, up the cost very, very significantly. But anyway, we have 15,000 points on our maximum settlement, so one gun is going to be a 15th of what we've got to spend overall. So I want to be a bit more cautious about what we spend our points on here. Um, what about, like, uh... Man, this is a hard choice, isn't it? We're going to have to test out different things. Let's go for an assault rifle. Basic assault rifle. Um... We don't have flak armor or anything either. My god, I really have been skimping on the research, haven't I? Speaking of skimping, let's make sure you've also got some pantsu uh, and head. Uh, gas mask? I guess a gas mask is better than nothing. We'll at least provide some defense. So we've got one gunner. Those cost 883. So we can only get maybe 15 of those, slightly more than that, per squad. Um, we've got a gunner. Should we also go for like a good melee character to, to cover the front line? 
So let's go ahead and create a new unit. I'll call you um, Skirmisher. Probably seems like a good idea. Skir, skir wow. I typed all the right letters, but completely in the wrong order. Um, sk skirmisher. Let's try that again. Head. Uh, preferably. War Mask. There we go. Sorry. War Mask. I, I want it to look horrifying. Redwood War Mask. I like that. Looks pretty good. Um, should we go for... Oh, jumpsuits would be a better idea, wouldn't they? Because those give the movement speed. Especially for a melee character. Then we'll also give them the shield projectors. Uh, we'll give them whatever our best melee weapon is. Because these guys aren't going to be too expensive as far as I can... Well, I guess it all depends on the weapon we give them. Um, so Gladius is 143. Uh, what else have we got here in terms of weapons? Cleaver, scalpel. I guess we haven't researched smithing, have we? So we haven't got much access to stuff. Go for an axe. An axe is probably the, safe, the best weapon we've got out of everything here. Uh, slightly cheaper than the Gladius. I'd rather just give him that instead, then. All right, we'll give him the Gladius. I can't see anything else that is uh, any better in terms of melee weapon class. I mean, cleaver, wrench, scalpel, fine, but probably wouldn't be that good in, in melee. Uh, sure. Gladius it is. We're gonna have our own little Roman... Oh, right, you have to pick the uh, gradient, don't you? What have we got, then? Um, man, steel, steel Gladius is quite expensive. Let's, let's do it. There we are. Um, and then we'll give you a uh, a jacket. There you go. Give a nice nice jacket there. And then, oh, and of course, we could give them a, a particular pattern. If we had a like a like a, a layout to our faction, we could give them a specific. Like all of our guys, obviously got various different types of armors. They've all got overalls and those strange little hats there. We could give our our squads similar colors or one color entirely, so that we can much more easily tell them apart from from enemies on the battlefield. Um, no, neither of those are fine. There we are. I like that one. Skirmisher. And then we can go ahead and create a new squad, which I'm absolutely going to do uh, for, for the front line. So is this the front line, I would assume? What's set point ref? Uh, so, so that's where they come from. Right, military town. So we've got 13,000 as our cost now. So I want a full lineup of skirmishers. We'll start from the center and work out. That makes most sense to me. So you go skirmisher, gunner, 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 gunner. Oh, man, this is already getting quite expensive. Huh? It's, it's going to be a, just a very basic test one more than anything else. Can we get two full lines of both? That would be fantastic. There we are. We've got a few more points to spare as well. Let's go for a couple of uh, couple of gunners here as well. We go for one more. Boom. Look at that. And then we will call this, uh, we'll call this basic test squad. Nice. So next raid we get to turn up, we can call an additional however many people that is. But anyway, we have to invest thousands of silver into the uh, actual settlement to get up to this stage. This is a trader caravan. Oh, that's cool. You can start, you can create yourself some trader caravans in a future update. I've seen this is perfect. Uh, so we can now see basic test squad is all finished to go. How do we drop them in then? That's the next, that's the only other thing I've, I've forgotten how to do. Uh, ah, there we go. Right. So then we go to military town. We hit deploy squad. Then military squad assigned to that settlement. Oh, set squad. There you go. Uh, basic test squad. And then you go deploy squad. And then unlike the base game, and this is really cool. Obviously, in the base game, you either drop in at the center or you drop in at the edge. This, you can pick where you want to drop them in and just send them on in. As we've just had a raid, I will demonstrate this for posterity's sake. But I can do that. And there you go. You get your get your gunners. You get your warriors too. That's quite cool. Just drop them in for the fun of it, obviously. Thank you, guys. Thank you for turning up. Uh, see you all later. That was just a test demonstration to show the people at home our military might. Quite fun, but obviously very, very expensive. Those were some very basic, lightly armed people, especially for this stage of the game. Those boys would be ripped apart. Seriously ripped apart. So it might be better just to go for massive tech investment into, like, one character. Give him all the best cataphract armor, all the best endgame weaponry. That would be a lot cooler. I think, like, drop in, like, a, a shock squad. Spartans or something like that. That's that's quite a cool idea. Um, but that does go on cooldown. So if we go to the settlements tab now and go to events, we can see that that's going to be... Uh, is it events or is it something else? Don't remember. But anyway, somewhere it says that it will take a long time before they are, are deployable again. Wouldn't it made a lot more sense if I had decided to show that off for when the goblins turn up? Just waiting for, to leave the map to see if that's when it will show the cooldown. But either way, that's basically a, a crash course in how the military stuff works. Now I'm looking to... Oh, and it's also free steel. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another way to get steel in this game. I'm, I'm more than happy with that one. That's obviously the downside to drop pods, really. But this is a really cool system, because the way the base game works is that um, when you get a raid, the raid is given a certain amount of points, as we've seen with that there. I, it probably is the same system that, that determines the... How have you not cut these plants yet? What the fuck? Is that not set to... Oh, it's set to priority two. I should probably set that back to priority one. Um, 
it might even be the same system that actually governs how this mod works. But basically, the game gets certain points that they can use for raids. As the difficulty increases, and as your colony wealth increases, as your amount of colonists, etc., etc., depending on Storyteller as well, the amount of raids that the game has access to, the amount of points for a raid that the game has access to, I should say, increases. And that's why this is such a cool system, because it essentially gives you the ability to also play around with, this, with a similar mechanic. So, I really like that. Anyway, that's, that's how it works in the base game. Right, our rebuilding is going along quite nicely, but we've got a couple of people that need healing up. Here's what we'll do then. I'll let as much time as... I think I said this at the end of yesterday. Obviously, I wasn't anticipating the Goblin Inquisition. But I'll let as much time tick before now and tomorrow so that we can work on the Resurrection Program so we can bring back our Fallen Warriors there. Oh, it's minus 15 now that those two are back on. I'm glad we did that in hindsight. Fingers crossed we, we have enough resources to, to bring them back straight away. Thank you, then, goes out to our... Firstly, you for watching at home. Thank you, you at home, for watching. Thank you to our patrons for making the channel possible in the first place. Big shout goes out to Goatfather, Jackson Woodman, Sweetie, The Potato Eater, Iguana Squad, My Name Isn't Dio, At Moses, Wilson Atef, Distorted Triangle, Orcs Wolf, and Scaz for their support at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place, particularly during lockdown. And a thank you goes out as well to somewhere. Mason Fireblast, Alex Bogard, Emerald Beam, Cam, Rob Girth, Blood for the Blood God, Kane GB, Udrick Haddon, Jackson, Brittany Lee, Grey, Mythomatic, Deadly Kitten Hunt, Sir Thor the Swede, Smirtworm, Derek F, Night Rouge, and everyone else at the Patreon tiers as well. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you for keeping it going here. Hopefully you guys are excited as I am for messing around with some of these militaries. But like I said, a one-man, a purely one-man playthrough could definitely be viable now.